So a couple of things in this video. I talked about a couple of videos ago about how AI, I think, has reached peak. It has reached well, plateau for the time being. My reasoning for this was based on just trends I've seen in technology before. So for example, smartphones. Smartphones have not really matured much in the last 10 years, right? Yes, the screens are a bit better, batteries last a little longer, cameras are better, but really everything's kind of flattened out. I would even argue since the first iPhone, we haven't really seen a huge improvement, a paradigm shift in uh, mobile phones. Think about laptops. That's why I say if you use a six, seven-year-old laptop, it's probably more than good enough to write code with, right? Even laptops, they've kind of reached plateau. They're a little thinner, they're a little faster, but it's pretty much the same thing. So if you look at AI, with the recent release of GPT-4 and 3.5, we've seen a big boop jump in AI implementations and other things. And you see that, you see that with the visual stuff as well. But uh, I said, I think we might be in a plateau stage right now where that might last for years. So um, the same thing, by the way, goes with development. Think about, think about mobile development. Think about web development front-end, back-end, full-stack, they're pretty much the same for many years now. But that is just normal in the life cycle of any technology. So you look at ChatGPT, uh, the uh, CEO, well, I'll just read the headline here. I just found this out. I found this article, uh, came out a couple of days ago. Uh, ChatGPT improvements are coming to an end, says, says OpenAI CEO. The new ChatGPT improvements and AI boost are reaching their end, reveals OpenAI CEO Sam Alton. The age of massive AI improvements in software such as ChatGPT is almost over. OpenAI CEO Altman has revealed that the sweeping changes of AI training are, is already reaching its limit. Speaking to an audience at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Altman explained that AI development is already reaching a massive wall. While AI improvements have resulted in huge quality boost to chat, GPT, and stable diffusion, amongst others, uh, this is reaching an end. OpenAI is currently deep in development for GPT-4, the next generation of its chat GPT platform. While companies such as Microsoft have praised the technology, Almond believes its massive growth is about is about to be majorly, major, majorly, excuse me, stunted. I think we are at, we are at an end of the era where it's going to be like these giant, giant models. Altman said. Despite this, Altman believes that there are ways of improving. While massive AI improvements may be a thing of the past, there is still optimization to be had on the current models. So. I will link to this article so you have uh, a reference to it. Why do I bring this up? Because there's this fear being promoted by non-nerds who pretend they are nerds, basically people, I believe, who are not professional coders. Uh, maybe they've done some Udemy courses, I don't know. But uh, they don't know about pro, pro code, so they look at GPT and they go, oh my God, it's writing code, that's it, the end of developers. They clearly don't understand, people say that, clearly don't understand professional development. They don't have a clue. Uh, coding is a key part, but a big part of the coding has to do with configurations, dealing with disparate systems, yada, yada, yada. The point is, is that ChatGPT or any AI as it stands now is not even close to being able to replace coders. It will speed up the process. I encourage you to learn what the AIs can do for you, whether it be coding or whatnot, and leverage them. But they're not going to replace the professionals anytime soon. So the counter to my argument some scared people have put out is, that, well, yeah, but this is just the way it is now. What's going to happen in a couple of years? Well, according to the CEO of GPT, not much is going to happen in the next few years or many years, just like the smartphones, just like the laptops, just like the web stack, right? Think about the web stack. When HTML5 took over in around 2012, 2013, maybe 2014, you can argue, 
that was it. That was like a major plateau for web development. You have the front end frameworks like the React and the Vue and the Angular. Again, that represented a, that big final shift, if you will, that plateauing of the development arc of the web stack, whether it be front end, back end, full stack, whatnot. I have not observed anything significantly new in the web space since that time. The only thing that's changed over the years really has been DevOps, which got very, very complex and now is being simplified once again, and the server models, the VPSs and so forth. And with the server models, it actually takes a lot of complexity to a certain extent out of application development. So for example, when we were building apps that needed to scale, I had to consider in the app database structure, et cetera, et cetera and, and, and caching layers. And we have to do that still to this day, but it's far, far less important today than it was 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, simply because VPSs are incredibly powerful. If you want to get crazy, you can implement the AWS where they do auto scaling of databases. And the database, by the way, in most apps, that is the bottleneck, is the database access, the in and the out of the database. So anyway, um, and it's just that server servers are so much faster, bandwidth is so much uh, bigger, uh, we have much more RAM, much more hard disk now, everything is so much cheaper. So the scaling issue is really a non-issue 99.999% of the time. Anyway, back to GPT-4, as you can see, the head is saying we've reached a plateau. So my theory of the plateauing of the technology stands, well, stands, um, not corrected, it stands true even with AI. So as I said, you saw it with smartphones, you saw it with laptops and computers, you've seen it with web development and just broader development. We've reached a plateau stage, very normal. Very common. So if you look at AI now as it is now, um, this is what we're dealing with right now. So whatever disruption it's going to have is what it is now. That's what's going to disrupt now. Don't fantasize in your brain about something that may happen uh, two years from now or five years from now or 10 years from now even. I think you're going to be disappointed in the level of disruption from this point going forward. So when you're considering AI in terms of its disruptive capacities, consider it for what it is now. I hope that makes sense. All right, uh, one last point. Uh, I have a background in psychology. That was my major in university, although I'm not a psychologist. Anyhow, that being said, I still kept up to date with uh, some aspects of it because it's very interesting and supremely useful to understand how your brain works. And here's one ba basic mechanism of the mind you should understand. Our brains are literally engineered through the process of evolution. It's been engineered to, uh, to fear potential threats and, ex and, and it exaggerates it. So our brains are designed, a little tiny threat will be blown up. Think about in your life, how many times you've run across situations where you said, oh my God, this is, oh, no, no, this, that's terrible, this is going to happen, and then nothing happens. It happens all the time. So whenever you're feeling anxiety about what could happen, what might happen, what's going to happen, understand that your brain is programmed, is engineered to artificially inflate these potential risk. Now, if you think about it from an evolutionary point of view, you know, go back uh, 50,000 years, 100,000 years, a million years, if you're walking through the woods, da, 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 da. the person who heard a rustling in the bush and just ran like a, like a scary cat, ah, get the hell out of here. this person survived. Now, most of the time, the rustling of the bush was not a predator, but sometimes it was. So over tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands, millions of years, those individuals who always ran because they were scared, they survived. The ones who didn't run, because they said, ah, it's just a bush rustling. Occasionally, they got eaten by a predator. So that's why we're the result of scared people, scaredy cats, little chickens. And that's who we are today. We're the offsprings of the chickens. And that's why you have all these anxieties. 
That's why all these fears like AI going to take over. Uh, it's just built into our uh, our programming of our lizard and monkey brains. If you want to learn more about that kind of stuff, by the way, you should take out, check out my course, Lizard Wizard, and my free Lizard Wizard training program, the Lizard Wizard Komodo, get your daily spells. This is going to help you a lot with your psychology, help you to understand all these things. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.